story you are about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a robbery detail. You get a teletype warning you that two holdup men are heading for your city. You know they're armed and dangerous. Your job? Be ready for them. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Tuesday, April 5th. It was raining in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out a robbery detail. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Chief Detective Thad Brown. My name's Friday. I was on my way back to and I, and it was 8.46 a.m. when I got to room 27A. Squad room. Frank? Yeah, Joe. Back here. How about it? Turn anything? Yeah, a couple of names. None of them match the descriptions. Mm -hmm. One of the mugs supposed to be in. This afternoon's mail, I said they were sending them there special. It'll be easier when we know who we're looking for, huh? Yeah, they will. Friday, Smith? Yeah, Skipper. You got a minute? Right there. Good morning. Yeah. Close the door, huh? Yeah, sure, Skipper. Sit down. Here. Take a look at this. Well, what is it? It's about the Merton brothers. Oh. I just talked to Leopold. Sheriff of Las Vegas. That's right. Gave me as much as he could on the Merton. Well, we checked our records. There's nothing on them here. Isn't likely. From what Leopold says, they're fresh out from the east. You name a town? No, someplace in Georgia. They're trying to run it out. Mm-hmm. Bolton we got said they pulled a couple of gas station holdups over there. Anything else? Yeah. At least they think so. Yeah. According to their records, the boys got into town a couple of months ago. No visible means, but plenty of money. Uh -huh. Hung around the places on the strip, gambled, drank, had themselves quite a time. Yeah? The department over there started to wonder where the money was coming from, put a couple of men on them full time. What'd they find out? Not much. Merton's played it cozy. They were finally picked up on a drunk charge, mugged and printed. Nothing to hold them on, so they were released. Yeah. Next morning, they skipped town, left clean. On the way out, they stopped long enough to kick in a couple of those gas station motels, you know, along the highway. Yeah. Scored pretty good. The victims make the identification right away? Yeah. As soon as they saw the pictures, sheriff's office notified Baker. Highway patrol there was waiting, but they must have gotten through before the word went out. Mm -hmm. We've been able to trace them through Barstow, Victorville, on through Pear Blossom, Little Rock. They worked hard all the way. What do you mean? Three service stations, two restaurants, one motel. Anything on them here in L.A.? Not yet. It's a matter of time. We gotta get them before then. Yeah. All the victims tell the same story. These two guys are off their rockers. The way it stacks up, they're well armed. The car they're driving is cold and they're on the needle. Hell it. Well, we got it. Leopold says they kept a couple of dates with known pushers in Vegas. As far as he could tell, there wasn't anything passed. That doesn't mean it didn't happen. Yeah. That's the story. Get on it. Okay, Skipper. I told you before it's a matter of time till they try to put somebody around here in town. Yeah. A couple of crazy gunmen, high on H. Bad combination. Somebody's gotta lose. Well, let's hope it's not us. Ethan Gifford Merton, WMA, 27 years, 5 feet 8 inches, 165 pounds, and his brother, Grady James Merton, 24 years, 5 feet 6, 152 pounds, arrived in Los Angeles on the morning of April 5th. The first word we had of their presence was a hotshot telephone call reporting the robbery of a market on the corner of Santa Monica Boulevard and Monroe Street. The market owners, Mr. and Mrs. Turner Dillon, had both been pistol with. Mr. Dillon had been removed to George Street Receiving Hospital for treatment of a skull fracture. The woman had been given emergency treatment on the scene and referred to her own doctor. The description the victims gave us matched the Merton brothers. As soon as the mug shots from Las Vegas arrived, Frank and I drove out to see Mrs. Dillon. We found her in the small apartment above the store. I just talked to the doctor at the hospital. He said Terry would be all right. Yes, ma'am. Sure a wonder the way they hit him. Yes, sir. No reason for it. We'd have given him the money. Turner kept telling him, take the money and leave us alone. Take the money. Didn't make any difference to him. I don't think they even heard us. We'd like you to look at some pictures, Mrs. Dillon, and see if you can point out the men. Oh, sure. Anything to help you catch him. Here you are, man. Think you've got him in here, do you? I hope so, yes. Mm-hmm. Well, you're right. Ma'am? Here they are. Same two. Is that going to help you get him? Yes, ma'am. 
Did you notice that they drove a car, Miss Dillon? I can't tell you for sure. We, we didn't really see until they were in the store. I see. Well, there must be something wrong with men who beat somebody up like that. You know, up here. Can't be a normal person. What'd they say to you? Well, they told us it was a stick-up. Said to hand over the money. The bigger one, that, that came right there. Mm. He said for us to hurry up. I see. My husband opened the cash register, then he gave him what was there. The big one told him to get to the safe, hand over that money, too. Yes. Yeah. Pointed the guns at us, kind of pushed us back to the safe. Turner opened it. All the time, we did just what they said. We weren't going to cause them any trouble. Yeah. Handed them all the money, every dime. Turner kept saying, take the money, but leave us alone. He must have said it 50 times. Before I even knew what was happening, Turner was lying on the floor. He'd been hit. I got mad. I tried to get at the man myself. Didn't make any difference to him. I was a woman. They hit me, too. With the gun? Yeah, here. Right on the face. I guess it didn't hit me as hard as it did Turner. I guess it didn't. Mr. Daffy, that's the store. Did you see him go? Not too good. To tell you the truth, I was more concerned with taking care of my husband than paying attention to them. Mm-hmm. A couple of hoodlums. I don't know where men like that come from. Must be something wrong with the way they were brought up. Yes, ma'am. Truth come out, it'll probably be their parents who ought to be in jail, not the boys at all. Well, you might be right. Sure, it's not the boys' fault. Well, we'll settle for them. <laughs> p.m. We received a communication from the FBI telling us that the Merton brothers were wanted by the state of Alabama for escape. A complete record on the two men was also sent. They'd been arrested a total of 26 times for everything from petty theft to kidnapping. According to the kickback, they'd escaped from a road gang while serving a sentence for possession of narcotics. We contacted the authorities in Alabama and asked them to forward all available information on the suspects. After talking with Captain Donahoe, Frank and I went over to the First Street Station to see Captain Walters. We asked him to supply a list of places the two brothers might turn for a narcotic contact. He gave us a list of several places in town and the names of men we could talk to. 8.16 p.m. We started to check them out. Yeah, what do we think? You seen Patsy Hayworth around? Well, why are you looking for him? Want to talk to him? What about? Well, if we wanted you to know, we'd ask for you, wouldn't we? You guys cops? That's right. Now, where's Patsy? I don't know. Come on. We got word that he hasn't been more than three blocks away from here in the past four years. Now, where is he? I told you. I don't know. You're not being smart, mister. Hey, back room. See you alone? Yeah, as far as I know. What's he doing? Nothing different. Playing solitaire. All right. Yeah? You want some? You pass your hair with? That's right. Sit down. I know you. I don't think so. You're in the wrong room. Police officers, we got some questions for you. That don't guarantee the answers. It's a start. Go. You heard from the Merton brothers? Who? Grady and Ethan Merton. No name. You don't know them. Mm. Red Queen and the Black King, and I could turn them over. <laughs> That's the baby I've been looking for. It's the first time today. Is that so? Yeah. First win. Too bad I didn't pay for the deck. I'd have made a killing. All right, now, come on, Hayworth. What do you know about the Mertons? I told you nothing. Now, why come to me? A lot of other guys in town? They're going to need eight. The way we got it, you can steer them to it. Old friends again. All right, get your coat. Why? Let's take a ride. For what? We can't talk here. Let's go downtown. Well, it's a nice place. There's nothing wrong with right here. All right, then. What do you know? What's in it for me? Why? Well, information like that ought to be worth something. You know we can't do anything for you. Come on, let's go. Well, how long do you figure you're going to be able to hold me? Long enough. How do you make that? Well, I'll tell you. We'll take you downtown, process you, pass the word you copped out. Told us about a half a dozen people in town. Thing like that gets around, you're going to be in trouble. You'll come back with what we want to know. Well, that's kind of crummy. It almost builds the blackmail. No, you called it. We didn't. You'd really do that? We would. All right. You crossed out all the roads. What do you want to know about the Mertens? You know them. I met them yet. Where? Place down the street. When? Last night. What is it, a bar or a hotel? Hotel. Are they there now? No, we just used the room to meet. You know where they are? No. What they want? You called it H. Are you doing any good? No, I told you the truth. I'm not pushing anymore. Why'd they come to you? Heard I could turn them on. What'd you tell them? Oh, well, said I couldn't help them. I told them I'd try and line something up. Stall, you know. I, I don't want any part of that action. You know, if I could have a piece of it, the answer would be no. Why? Well, these guys are too far out. They must be shooting seven, eight caps a day. Got to spend most of their time cooking. They're out of their skull. Yeah, mm-hmm. You got anything that'll help box them in? I don't know. Hey, maybe the broad. What do you mean? Well, they're dragging a broad with them, a big one. Must be 6'2 in a stocking. You know her? I've seen her around. Where? 
She used to hustle drinks downtown. It got too rough for some of the managers. They tied the can to her. She's been floating for a couple of months. Ties into some guy who'll pay the bill. As soon as he wises up, she drops and goes on to Powell. She got an address? Oh, I can't name it. Some flea bag on Fifth, I think. She a hide? I don't know. She might chip you with it. Not steady enough. Mm-hmm. But she's smart, you know. How you look, she'd do real good. One of the homeliest women I ever met. Is that so? Yeah, looks like she should be wearing a bridle. Where can we get in touch with her? Well, it's hard to say since she's running with the Mertens. Yeah. You might try the Ten of Hearts. Where's that? It's a dive on six. She used to show for the place. When they kicked her out, she went freelance. She still hangs around, I think. No. Right. How'd you leave it with the Mertens? Huh? Are they going to contact you? I don't know. They might. You want me to call you if they do? Yeah, we'd appreciate that. Okay. You got a card? Here. Yeah. Thanks. I'll give you a ring. All right, Hayward. We'll hear from you, right? Yeah. There you are, you see? What? You should have banked the game. I lost. No, you didn't. Huh? You won. We returned to the office and ran the name and description of the woman through the record section. We came up with a package listing arrest for violation of section 647.5 of the Penal Code and 4220 LAMC, soliciting drinks. She'd served two terms in the county jail and at the present time was not on parole. We got her address and drove out to see her. The landlady at the apartment house told us she was out and wasn't expected back at any certain time. Frank and I drove down to the Ten of Hearts, the small bar on 6th Street. We found the woman sitting on one of the front stools. Hi, honey. Like to buy a drink? Your name Jane Finletter? Names don't mean anything here. Just friends. That's all it really counts, friends. How about it? That's your name? Are you guys cops? That's right. What are you asking me for? I ain't done nothing. We're not rousing. We want to talk to you. About what? Let's get outside. Be easier to talk there. I got a choice. Not much. Okay. Henry? Yeah, Jane. Save your stool. I'll be right back. Okay. So. Right out here. We can talk in the car. Yeah. Go ahead. Get in. Okay, what's your beef? You work here, do you? What do you mean this place? That's right. Uh-uh. Once in a while, I come in, have a couple of drinks, that's it. Where do you live? I've been the route, cop. You know, I'm out here to pass the time of day. What are you after? A couple of questions. Not the power for that. What do you mean? You're not uniform. You don't send a suit out to ask about a traffic accident. What do you do with your time, Jane? Move around. Well, lay it out for me. What? When? Start first of the week, huh? Okay. Slept late Monday. Got up about 1.30. Had a bad night Sunday. Woke up with a real head. Mm-hmm. Tagged the bar on the corner. Had a couple of Bloody Marys. Went home. Changed my clothes and met a friend. You want to give us his name? Ain't go any farther? Not from us. Nick Pfeiffer. Okay. What happened then? I was out with him until maybe 2.30. That's in the morning. Yeah. Came home, went to bed. Slept until about 11.30, too. Mm-hmm. Got a call from a couple of friends who just got into town. Got their names? Same deal. Same deal. A couple of brothers. They met a girlfriend of mine in Las Vegas. She gave them my number. How about the names? Ethan and Grady Merton. Okay. Met them, had a couple of drinks, and drove out to the beach for lunch. Came back to town, had dinner. Takes us up to last night. Have you seen them today? No. Nope. Ethan called me this afternoon. Yeah? Said they had some kind of a business deal to take care of this evening. After that, they were going to pick me up. Where? Here, in about an hour. Mm Mm-hmm. That the reason for the muscle, the Merton brothers? Might be. We got a game going. I'm not on their side. I want that clear. They pulled a boo-boo. They did it themselves. No help from me. Mm Mm-hmm. As I'm concerned, they both got soft spots. What do you mean? Their skulls. Soft. They say what this business was they had to take care of. No, I mentioned something about somebody owing them money, something like that, so they were going to collect. Didn't say where, though, huh? Not to me. Mm-hmm. The way they were rigged last night, though, didn't leave a lot of doubt. Hmm? All those guns going out to collect. Yeah. They weren't going to do it nice. Another team of men were sent out to help us cover the place. 
Frank and I took up our positions in the back of the bar and we waited. 1.15 a.m., 1.30, 1.45. What do you think, John? I don't know. Maybe they decided not to show us. That's possible. Yeah. Hey, John, I got an idea this morning. Yeah? Well, I was shaving. Mm-hmm. Well, I always have trouble, you know, try all the things they tell you. Let the lather stay on two and a half minutes, hot water, all the things you're supposed to do. I've tried them all. Mm-hmm. Finally came up with the answer. You did, huh? Yep. Well, what is it this time? New kind of razor. New razor. Yeah. I got thinking about Fay and gave me the idea. How does that work? Faye's my wife. Yeah, I know that. She's shaving now? Oh, you don't understand. She's not shaving. No? No. See, last night she gave herself one of those home permanents, and I got the idea from that. For the new razor? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They got those permanent things for different kinds of hair, like hair that's hard to curl, medium, easy to curl. Easy, you know. I think I know what's coming here. Mm. Well, if somebody invented a razor for tough beards, medium beards, light beards, he'd do all right. Mm-hmm. You're going to invent it, are you? Sure, I'm not going to invent it. You know how I am with those things. It's got the idea, though. That's mm-hmm. all. I'd sure like to buy one if they yeah. had them. Mm-hmm. Tough beard, find one right away. Yeah. First day. That'd be the answer. Well, here comes ours. Hmm? Looks like Lady Merton just came in, doesn't it? Yeah. Where his brother is? Might be outside. Better wait a minute before we move. Huh? Oh. He's talking to the thin letter woman. Yeah. Yeah, I'm starting to leave. Let's go. We'll take him outside. Right. All right, Merton, hold right. it up. He's leaving, Joe. All right, come on, calm down. Take it easy. Leave me alone. Police officer. Uh, uh, take it easy. Uh, All right, now, come on, Merton, get up. Come on, get over there by the wall. Stand still. Hmm. Hey, Joe. Luger hurt himself. Yeah. All right, put your hands down the back. What are you shoving me around for, cop? You're going to be sorry about... Where's what? your brother? You'll find him. you got a fat mouth, mister. Now, where is he? I won't lead you to him. You got him, huh? That's right. You turned him on, didn't you? Don't you talk to me. Guys like you always cause me trouble. Ah, no, you cheap bum. I don't know what he's in season. You're sure going to be sorry when he hears about this. Tell him to stay away, too. He'll get you. You can't dig far enough to get away. He'll find you and pay you back. All right, that's him. enough. Now, let's go. You tell her. She's going to collect interest on it. She'll be sorry. Not alone. Huh? She'll have company. The other team of men remained at the bar in the event the other suspect returned. We took Grady Merton to the city hall for questioning. Empty your pockets. Huh? Come on. Empty them out. Yeah. Wallet. Change. Keys. Handkerchief. Pen knife. That's it. Let me see your arms, Merton. Huh? Come on, let me see your arms. What for? Now, there's two ways to do this. You take your choice. Okay, okay. All right. When did you have your last pop? You got to prove it. That won't be hard. All we got to do is drop you in an ISO cell and you'll be screaming for it. Sure. You get all the money you can on that. I'll book it myself. Let me see the wallet. There's nothing wrong with your reach. Mr. Pink slip on your car? Yeah. Bought it in Nevada? That's what it says. Yeah. What are those keys for? Nothing. I just like to carry them. Stand up. Now, what happens now? You hit me? Turn around. Forgot something, didn't you, Merton? Huh? Key here. What's it for? I never saw before. Hendricks Arms Hotel. Is that where you've been staying? I'm not going to say it anymore. You want me to talk? It's got to be with a lawyer. All right. I know my rights. You can't make me say nothing more. You don't have to. Huh? We got all we need. <laughs> We had Grady Merton taken to the main jail and held to answer charges of violation of Section 211 PC. 3.26 a.m., Frank and I left the office and drove out to the Hendricks Arms. It was a large private home in the Crenshaw area that had been converted into a hotel. Frank covered the back entrance to the building and I walked up the steps. You've got a good reason coming around here this time of night. Police officer, can you tell me who's registered in room 5C? What for? Police business. Listen, mister, this is a clean place. There's no trouble. Now, that's the way I want it. That's the way I want it to be. Yes, stay. sir. Now, who's in room 5C? A mm, couple of guys. What are the names? I don't know. Smith or something. White rented the room to him. Only seen him a couple of times. 
All right, did one of them look like this picture? Uh, come in here where you get some light, huh? All right. Now then, let's take a look. Oh, this is how here? That's right. Hmm. Well, yes. Yes, that's one of them. Yeah. Is he in now? Well, I wouldn't have any way of knowing that. Tenants come and go as they please, see? As long as they don't let the water run, don't have no loud parties, we don't bother. Where is the room? It's the third floor rear. Okay. This hall go to the back door? Yeah, you got to go through the kitchen. Say, can you tell me what this is all about? It'd be better if we didn't. There's going to be any shooting? I don't think so. Well, if there is, I can give you a hand. I've got a 12-gauge in the room. I used to hunt ducks. I, I can get it if you no, get a sir, hand. No, sir, that won't be necessary. All right, Frank. Yeah. Is he here? Don't know yet. Uh-huh. Is there any back stairs? Yes, sir. Right through there. Looks like a closet, but you open another door and you can go on up. All right, sir. Do you have a key to the room? Yeah. yeah. Here you are. Want me to go with you? Might be better if you stayed here. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll get my gun guard the front door. He won't get out. I'll guard it. down this way. Yeah, easy. No noise. No. You all set? Yeah. Locked. Behind you, Joe. Doing this. Now, hi, Jack, what are you guys doing here? Come on, up. Right. Right, how'd you get to me? How'd you do it? We did. I should have killed you all the time in the world, and I didn't do it. I should have killed you. Yeah, you should have. Perfect shot, and I couldn't do it. No reason at all. Wouldn't have cost me any more. That's so? Yeah, sure. They never executed anybody in this state for killing a cop. Wouldn't have cost me any more. You've got a bigger bill than you can pay now. Come on. The story you've just heard is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On August 18th, trial was held in Department 98, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. Ethan Gifford Merton and Grady James Merton were tried and convicted of robbery in the first degree, five counts, and received sentence as prescribed by law. Robbery in the first degree is punishable by imprisonment in the state penitentiary for a period of from five years to life. Because of the viciousness of their crimes, their sentences were set to run consecutively. A hold was placed on them by the state of Alabama in the event they are paroled. You have just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the office of Chief of Police, W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Technical advisors, Captain Jack Donahoe, Sergeant Marty Wynn, Sergeant Vance Brasher. Heard tonight were Ben Alexander, Herb Ellis, Virginia Gregg, Vic Rodman, Bert Holland. Script by John Robinson. Music by Walter Schumann. Hal Gibney speaking. Watch an entirely different Dragnet case history each week on your local NBC television station. Please check your newspapers for the day and time. Chesterfield has brought you Dragnet, transcribed from Los Angeles.